Hey everyone, I'm Athena. I might be a bit older than most of the people here, but I've got a story you might find interesting. It's about how I got back at my ex-husband, Kingston, and his mom, Mary, nearly eight years after we split up. Yeah, I'm single now. My marriage and divorce really shook me up, so I'm not in a rush to jump back into dating. But I'm feeling pretty good about getting even with Kingston and Mary. I met Kingston through a friend at work. He was my friend's cousin, and we hit it off at one of his family parties. At first, Kingston seemed like a great guy, charming and sweet, even though he didn't make a lot of money. I thought he was a good person, so I decided to give our relationship a shot. Things were amazing at first. We were like the perfect couple, always together and crazy about each other. But as time went on, Kingston started acting strange. Instead of being affectionate, he started making weird demands. He said, Why do you live so cheaply? Athena, you make plenty of money, but you never spend it on us or yourself. I'm surprised your friends even want to hang out with you. You don't meet their standards. I replied, I've told you before, Kingston, just because I earn more money doesn't mean I should blow it all on fancy things. I have plans for the future, and I like saving up for them. It's not about hiding money. I just prefer to be responsible with it. You're just being selfish and not sharing with me, he accused. That's not true, Kingston. I do treat you sometimes, and I don't ask much in return. I defended myself. Well, it's not enough. I want a better life than this. I don't think I can be with you if you're going to be so stingy, he said, hurting my feelings. His words stung, but I started to doubt myself. Maybe I was being unfair to him. After all, I did earn a lot more money than he did. So I thought maybe I should spend more money on him. I bought into that idea and went along with it. I was happy with him for a while, and we even got married. But foolishly, I ended up paying for most of the wedding myself. I also ended up covering more than 70% of our household expenses. At the time, I thought I was just doing it for my partner. I never imagined I'd be taken advantage of like this. A few months after we got married, Kingston's mom moved in with us out of the blue. She just showed up with her suitcases and declared, So, Athena, you must be surprised to see me here. Well, I'm going to live here from now on. I was shocked. Wait a minute, Mary. Who said this was okay? You can't just barge into our house and make decisions like this. But Kingston brushed it off, saying, Calm down, Athena. I invited mom over. She'll be staying with us now. Why are you being so dramatic? It's just my mom. She can't work forever. But we never talked about this, Kingston. Why would you decide something like this without discussing it with me? He replied, Look, you earn enough money to take care of the three of us. So, without even considering consulting me, Kingston insisted that his mom living with us was my responsibility since I was the one with the money. He basically said he didn't need my permission to bring her into our house. I was really mad at both Kingston and Mary for disrespecting me like that. But I felt stuck. Our house was rented in both our names, even though I was the only one paying the bills. Kingston hardly ever had any money to contribute. In the five years we were together, he never once bought me a gift. Now, I'm not saying I need fancy presents, but his lack of effort in our relationship really bothered me, especially after we got married. And on top of all that, I was stuck footing the bill for his mom, who didn't even help out around the house. One day, I couldn't take it anymore. I vented to a coworker about Mary and Kingston, and I noticed his expression change. It was clear he was hiding something. When I pushed him for more details, he dropped a bombshell. Kingston had a gambling addiction and had even lost his previous job for stealing money to fuel this habit. I felt like my whole world was crashing down. At first, I didn't want to believe it, but then he sent me screenshots of their conversation 
including pictures of Kingston gambling with other girls around him. It made me feel sick to my stomach. I went straight home and confronted Kingston. I said, I know all about your gambling, Kingston. I'd also know you got fired from your last job for stealing. What's wrong with you? He scoffed. Oh, please, Athena. Not everyone wants to be a middle-class worker like you. I'm going to make millions from gambling. I'm getting pretty good at it. Soon we'll be rich. I couldn't believe what I was hearing. You're out of your mind, Kingston. How are you even getting money to gamble with? He replied, Oh, your savings account had some cash in it. Came in handy for my games. I was stunned when he admitted to stealing from my savings. One betrayal wasn't enough. There was another one coming. I had no clue Kingston was secretly dipping into my hard-earned savings. It devastated me. Started yelling at him for touching my money. I had worked tirelessly for years to save it, and now it was all gone because of Kingston's gambling. As we argued, Mary came over to see what was happening. Not surprisingly, she took Kingston's side. She said, my son is smart. He'll make it big through gambling. You're fighting with him for no reason. Your money is his money, and he can spend it as he pleases. I was livid. No, absolutely not. That money was earned through hard work and sacrifice. It contributed almost everything to the household. I didn't even know Kingston lost his job. He stole my money to gamble and pretended like he still had a job. Don't talk about my son like that. He's doing you a favor. You're not capable of being successful on your own. Only Kingston can make something out of his life. You're useless, she retorted. You've got some nerve calling me useless when all you've done is use my money. Neither you nor your son have helped me this past year. I've sheltered the family on my own, and this is what I get in return. I'm done with both of you. Kingston is just a failure who will never amount to anything in life. I'm leaving. That's when I made up my mind to divorce Kingston. Despite loving him, the betrayal was too much to bear. Plus, there was. I couldn't stay with a man who had no qualms about using my money for gambling. Truth be told, I had been feeling weary of our marriage for a while. I knew Kingston would never change. He had proven that to me. So I made the decision to file for divorce. But getting a peaceful divorce turned into a nightmare. My ex tried everything to make me stay, from begging to blackmailing me about splitting my assets and paying alimony. His mom joined in, harassing me to reconcile with Kingston. It took months of legal battles for my lawyer to convince him to drop the alimony and asset-sharing demands. I threatened to press charges for stealing from my bank account, which finally made him sign the divorce papers. In the end, I lost a lot of money because of his gambling habit. But that didn't stop Kingston and Mary from hurling one last insult my way. They said, you haven't won, Athena. You're nothing but a worthless witch. You might be earning a lot now, but one day I'll be richer than you and you'll have to beg me for money. We won't forget this insult, Athena. You abandoned my son and me when we needed you. One day, you'll pay for it. Mark my words, Athena. Kingston will be more successful than you. I replied, let's wait and see what happens. A day will come when I'll make you eat your words. We'll see who ends up begging. After the divorce was finalized, I left my job to start fresh in a new state. I didn't want to be around Kingston's cousin anymore. Got a new job offer with a promotion, making it even more appealing. Over the years, I saved diligently, working hard and climbing the corporate ladder. After eight years, I had enough savings to invest in the company I worked for. Following a meeting with company executives, I became a director. It was like a dream come true. Meanwhile, I heard Kingston continued his gambling habit and lost whatever little money and assets he had. He and Mary were moving to my state to escape their creditors. Kingston ended up marrying a wealthy heiress, Riley, 
whose father was a business associate of mine. Kingston complained about Riley and was suspicious of his new son-in-law. He also resented Mary and considered her a free order. I kept quiet, knowing it wasn't yet time to confront Kingston. I was leading a good life until I received an unexpected call from Mary. She informed me that Kingston had applied for a position at the company where I worked. I was curious to see if it was finally time to give Kingston his just desserts. Mary's call confirmed it. She gloomed about Kingston's new life, saying, Hello, Athena. This is Mary. I hope you haven't forgotten me. I replied, How could I forget my dear mother-in-law, who mooched off me for three years and helped her son steal my money? Long time, no seat, Mary. What's this about? Mary continued, Remember how you called my son a failure? Well, he's married to a beautiful girl and found a new job that pays him 120 k per year. My son has become successful. It's your loss. I couldn't help but laugh. Her words were so ridiculous to me. Most of what she said was a lie, but she didn't realize I already knew the truth. She seemed quiet and confused when I finally calmed down enough to respond. First of all, dear ex-mother-in-law, Kingston only earns 60 k a year. There's no need to lie. And yes, I already have all the information about him. I said, Mary seemed taken aback. What do you mean? Are you accusing me of lying? And who told you he earned 60K? No one had to, Mary. Do you want to know how I found out? My assistant interviewed him yesterday. I replied, Mary protested. That's impossible. There's no way you're related to the company. It's a big enterprise, and you're just a worthless woman. Well, here's some news for you, Mary. I'm a director at this company, so I know exactly how much Kingston can earn. And by the way, you're bold to assume he even got the job. I retorted. Mary tried to defend Kingston, saying he's smart and wouldn't have trouble getting the job. I countered by telling her that my assistant had placed him at the bottom of the candidate list. Just like eight years ago, no sane company would hire him with his record gap. I'd also hinted that I would inform Kingston's wife about their deception. Mary's demeanor changed completely. She started begging, saying Kingston had contributed to my success and asking me to give him the job. I couldn't help but laugh at her request, considering everything they had put me through. I told her firmly that I wouldn't help Kingston he was capable of ruining his own reputation, and I wouldn't vouch for him, not even professionally. I ended the call, and despite Mary's continued attempts to reach me, I didn't respond. Instead, I instructed my assistant to send rejection letters to all the unsuccessful candidates. Then I waited for Kingston to call me, knowing he would have my number from Mary. Kingston called me within an hour of receiving the rejection letter. I answered because I wanted to witness his humiliation firsthand. He sounded desperate, nothing like the arrogant jerk I divorced. What do you want, Kingston? I see my dear ex-mother-in-law gave you my number already. I said, Athena, I know you're one of the directors at the company I interviewed for. I just got the rejection letter. Please, do something. Help me get the job. I know you can help if you want to, he pleaded. I scoffed. Why do you think I would jeopardize my professional life for you? Do you think I'm crazy? You have some nerve to ask me for a job after all these years. He continued. Look, I know I didn't treat you right back then, but I was still your husband. We have some good memories. Please consider those and give me the job. My wife, Riley, will leave me if I don't get a job soon. I know you've lied to Riley about your financial situation. I interrupted. Guess what, Kingston? I know her family. Have her number from her dad. All I have to do is tell the truth, and she'll be free. Kingston went silent after hearing this. I knew I had struck a nerve. He immediately begged me not to tell Riley everything but I hung up on him. Next, I texted Riley 
and asked her to call me, which she did. I introduced myself and explained the situation. Hi, Riley. My name is Athena, and I'm your father's friend. I also happen to be the ex-wife of your now husband. There are a few things you should know about Kingston. He's been lying to you. I began. What do you mean, Athena? What is he lying about? Riley asked. He's not as rich as he claims to be. He has absolutely nothing of value. You posted on Facebook that he got a 120K job, but he only applied for a 60K job, which he didn't get. I revealed. What the hell are you talking about? But he told me. Riley trailed off. I know what he told you, Riley, but I've seen it on your Facebook. I know you might not believe me. I said calmly. You can ask your dad. He can easily find out if Kingston is lying. I suggested to Riley. But I don't understand why would Kingston lie to me? She asked. Because he wanted to take over your inheritance and properties. He always wanted a luxurious life for himself. And he's a gambler. I explained. Unfortunately, we divorced because I refused to fund his lifestyle and support his gambling habits. His mother supports him. Anyway, I don't know what he told you. But that's the truth. You can ask around if you're doubtful about me. I don't want you to be stuck with a liar and a loser. Thank you for telling me, Athena. I'll dig for more information and find out. Riley assured me. Also, don't worry. I made him sign a prenup and only agreed to remove it once he gets a job. Looks like that won't be happening after all. With that, I finished my part of the revenge. The aftermath was glorious. Mary and Kingston initially kept calling me, begging for my help, while Riley uncovered the truth herself. Riley and her dad confronted him and then filed for divorce. Since Riley still had the prenup in place, none of her assets would go to Kingston. Instead, he would have to hire a lawyer to work through the divorce. Mary Ann Kingston continued harassing me until I threatened to expose them online, which made them stop contacting me. Last I heard, Kingston still comes by our company to see if there's a position open. I also heard from sources that Mary Ann Kingston are now constantly fighting about money problems. I guess now Mary will finally know what it's like to be stuck with a man-child for the rest of her life.